it's early in the morning, it's like stupid o'clock, and I'm gonna go down the beach and do some photography with my Franca Salida 3 camera and a roll of Shanghai GP3 film that was kindly sent to me by Dean Cornwall. Thanks a lot, mate, for sending me this film. I've used this film before and I do actually quite like it, so I'm gonna go down the beach and do some seascapes with it. Um, I'm not sure, at the moment it's dark, but it's about a 10% chance of rain whether it will or not, I hope not. Um, but I don't know what the clouds are gonna do when the sun rises. I don't wanna get sun in my camera, so I'll just wait for it to just start coming up light in the clouds. Hopefully there'll be some clouds down there and then I can um, start taking the photograph. So uh, six by six, medium format, Franca Salida free camera that I'm gonna be shooting. And then hopefully that will wake me up. I'll get back with the shots, get in the dark room and see what I can do uh, in the dark room with some nice seascape. Morning, sunny, seascape things um yeah sun's coming through there's not as much cloud as i was hoping for i was hoping for more clouds breaking through but you know the sun's well, it's over there somewhere but it ain't coming up properly yet so when it comes up hopefully those clouds will just uh, disperse a little tiny bit I hope so, but I've set up here at the moment. I've got these nice stones in front of me on the beach. There's no one about, literally no one around at all. I've seen a couple of joggers, that's about it. The Salida camera set up, ready to take the first picture. Got nice and low on these stones down here, you can see me still. Nice and low on these stones um, out to the sea. The tide is halfway in, so that's ideal. Perfect. Oh, I'm proper awake now. I'm ready for the day, me, mate. Ah. This is grand. Look, no one, no one around, not a soul anywhere. It's like walking out into your own back garden. Fantastic. Right, let's go over there. Esplad Beginner's Guide to Film Photography and Darkroom Printing. Packed with lots of information, illustrations and exclusive unseen step-by-step -step videos, all in a simple and easy way to understand. Hit the link in this video's description or visit the Esplad website for more details. Well, that was lucky, bang on the dot. I read the forecast and it said it was going to rain around about 8 o'clock this morning and it's, uh, what's the time now? It's 10 to 8. So it's just started to rain, but I was down here by around about quarter past 6, 6 o'clock this morning and i managed to get some photographs in the camera the only trouble is i wasn't sure with that gp3 what my reciprocity failure would would be um for those that don't know what i'm talking about with if you're new to film photography you don't know what i'm talking about if i'm doing long exposures 
one second, two second, three second, four second. On digital, it's fine, it just comes out as it is. But on film, it just needs that extra longer bit of exposure uh, for the light to absorb into the film. I don't know the science behind it, but that's as far as I know. It just needs longer time. So if you meter for one or two or three seconds, um, there's usually reciprocity charts that allow um, that gives you times for compensating for. Um, the uh, film's failure to absorb light, I suppose. So anyway, I was um, literally winging it, the, 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 the compensation times, because I couldn't find anything. I, I forgot to look, but then down there, I, I was looking on my phone. I couldn't see anything for GP3. If you know anything about that, let us know in the comments uh, if there's any links to reciprocity failures on that film. Yeah, so I was all over the place with, with, my, with my speeds, if you like. So what I'm going to do when I get back, I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to stay and develop. The film not going to develop normally. I'm going to just dump it in uh, rod null, minimal, um, uh, highly diluted rod null, and let it stand for an hour, maybe an hour or ten, maybe an hour or fifteen. I don't know. It decides what depends what I want to do, um, and that way I'll be able to get reasonably decent results out of the film that I possibly shot at various speeds when I was down there. If I develop normally, chances are I'm going to get overexposed, maybe underexposed images. Um, but if I stay and develop, I've got a chance of uh, um, getting some information out of those negatives. So that's what I'm uh, going to do when I get back. Hopefully, it'll be all right. I have me Coca-Cola now, talk to Fred, listen to the news, and then uh, go back have some Marmite on toast and a cup of coffee. to get decent results you can see the legs here on the baseboard they look as they are they're not overexposed some of them might be but um, they're workable you know that was uh, a bright morning and I was in bulb mode on that camera because I don't trust the um, shutter speeds on that camera at anything lower than a hundred really so uh, I was using bulb mode and counting in and trying to allow for reciprocity or reciprocity and they came out all right, especially these ones. These ones don't look too bad at all. These were the early ones in the morning. But there's one in particular. Look at this. I've not got a clue what's happened there. I really don't know what that's about. I can't figure that out. A bizarre phenomenon on my negative there, but it uh, doesn't matter. I've got loads to play with. So here's a contact print that I've made of all the negatives. First ones, they, they look okay. There's a couple that are quite overexposed. In fact, I noticed that the shutter on, on that camera is getting stuck. So uh, although I was in bold mode when I released, it was just taking time to click back down. Um, and I had to start pushing it back down manually. Bit of a pain, it might need lubricating the, uh, the, the shutter on that camera. But uh, never mind, at least I've got some workable um, uh, negatives. Uh, in the dark room, so that was really weird. That's I can't figure that out. That looks like a little tiny Tasmanian devil going across the beach. Um, but yeah, I've got some nice ones. I actually like this one here, the top right. That's quite nice. That's a, a long view of the beach and the waves coming up on the on the bay. And I've got two down here that I like, um, identical. And the reason I like these two, I just like the uh, the horizon there, that dark line. Nice and straight as well. Managed to get that camera nice and straight on the beach this morning. Um, but that's pretty much what I like, that divide. So I'll be able to work on that. Maybe a little bit of dodging here to enhance those rocks a bit. Maybe a little bit of burning in the sky. I don't know until we get it any larger, but I do like these two. This one is where the water's come right up and started to go back. And uh, th this one here, I can see more sand. So I've got a feeling that would work much better as a print.
So just off camera, I just did a series of tests on that negative. This is my first test strip with a two and a half grade filter, F8 on the enlarger. Uh, and I went all the way from two, four, six, eight, and then 10, 12, and 14. And I looked at, this is just on the sky, by the way. This piece of test strip was just on the sky. Um, I figured out I can start from the sky and work my way around it from there. So I decided 10 seconds looked best for the sky. And then I went off and did a more fuller test strip. This is a five by seven piece of paper, uh, straight coming down. So you can see 10 seconds of sky. The whole lot was 10 seconds, just so I could see where I need to go uh, with any dodging and burning. I do have a little bit of dodging and burning to do if I want to make the image pop, um, but I'm quite happy with the 10 seconds how it is at the moment. You can see the sky uh, at the top. And as we come down past the sea, the cliffs and mountains in the background are a bit, a bit gray, but uh, you know, it's early in the morning, but down to the sea. So all these areas here, I'd like to try and make pop if I can, just by maybe burning some of the sand in, uh, which will make that white, uh, the white water pop out, stand out, you know? But then looking at the uh, cliff in the background, well, it is what it is, you know, I can't, uh, I could try and enhance it. Maybe I will, let's have a look. So this is my first print and it ain't come out too bad at all. It's, it's a little bit flat, but I need to work on it. A little tiny hair there to sort that out. But um, overall, it ain't too bad at all. What I did was 10 seconds and then I just dodged this area around the stones for a few seconds. I dodged the white water uh, for a few seconds. And then I burned in this area here around the um, sand area to make that a little bit blacker. Hasn't come out as black as I wanted it. And then I just vignetted the sky in a little tiny bit and down here trying to miss this part. Um, that was at 10 seconds. I don't think I need to do any dodging at all. If I just go for six seconds instead of 10, all I'm left to do then is to burn in the areas that I want, which means the sea area gets six seconds, this gets, the whole lot gets six seconds, and then I can just burn in the sand and then burn in the top of the sky. Now this is the third print, that's the first one I did at 10 seconds. This one now was at 8 seconds and all I did was um, with this one just burned in, arced into the sky a little bit just so the centre wasn't so flat as like this was. And then I used another burn card, I took the filter out and just burned in the sand a little tiny bit more uh, just to make the sand a bit darker really. And the pebbles as well, that's, um, that's come out identical. Uh, and so is the white waters as well. So I'm quite happy with the third print. I think it looks better than the first one. What do you guys think? So I'm just gonna do a test strip right across the middle um, on the uh, horizon, if you like see what that gives us and then I can work around from there four six so again this one's come out nice as well this is a test strip um, on that negative uh, this was six seconds as a test the sky looks nice I could just do with blackening the horizon a little bit and just very slightly dodging the middle, as well as dodging these rocks down here. So I re I'm reckoning, if I look a bit closer, just a couple of seconds dodging here, a couple of seconds dodging the white water there, and then burning in that sky. So let's have a go at that. So I've just fixed and washed this one and it's come out really nice. The stones have come out quite nice. Um, all I did was just use this black bar here that I used to weight my templates down. So I did six seconds overall. I just covered the stones for three seconds and then changed the direction of the bar uh, to slim it down and just covered the white water here for another couple of seconds. 
And then I've got me burn tool. And I've just burned in this area here 10 times. One, two, three, 10 times until that started to get burned in. And the sky's come out really nice without doing anything with it. The only thing I did with the sky was just slightly vignetted using this little um, dodge tool here. So covered all this area and it kind of made an arc on the top of the sky there as you can see. So I'm really happy with that and I'll make another print. So that's been quite a long day. Only a short time down the beach taking the photographs but most of the time was the developing and in the darkroom making the prints. But it's all fun and groovy if you like film photography and darkroom printing as I do. And uh, it was quite nice going down the beach. It was lovely seeing the sunrise. It's not often that I see that. And uh, you know you just get your thoughts together etc etc. It's quite nice quite calm quite uh, you know you can get into yourself do a bit of yoga so stay in development I haven't done that for ages and I used to do it a long while back um, when I first started film photography basically because it was cost effective you know but a litre of rod no wasn't that ch it wasn't that expensive and just 10 millilitres done the job so I did a lot of stand developing in the, in the early days of my film photography and today I had to go back to doing stand developing because I wasn't quite sure about my exposures. I was in bold mode, hitting it with a shutter release. I just wasn't sure of the reciprocity failure on that GP3. So like I said, if anyone knows in the comments can point us in the right direction there. I looked over the internet, I couldn't find anything solid. Um, you know, lots of different people saying different things, like stand development, but nothing solid. So uh, let us know if anyone knows in the comments where I can point me to the right direction for that reciprocity fade out for that film. It's a nice film as well. I've used it before and I had good results and I had good results this time around as well. Made a couple of nice prints. The one that I've, uh, you saw the last one I made, that's in the selenium toner at the moment. Guys, that's going to go out on eBay if anyone wants to bid up on that print, uh, auction for the print and support the channel. And I liked it that much that I'm actually going to frame one and put it indoors. And that's what I went down the beach for this morning. You can see me plot up. That's what my intentions. Uh, when I went off to the side and the other side, that was just afterthought. But the last final print that you saw, that's what I went down the beach for and I managed to get. So I've got some nice sunrise, nice photographs, and I've had a great time in the dark room making videos and photography. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Got to say thank you to the guys that support me on Patreon. Also, the guys that support me on the YouTube community channel. And also, thanks to Dean Cornwall for sending me the GP3. I'll catch you next time.